One of the uh, most uh, important and interesting people in Colorado's water history, really in uh, the West's water history, is Wayne Aspinall, congressman from the West Slope for 20 some years, 24 years actually. Uh, he was a sort of a lifelong politician in many respects. He began his uh, political career on a school board. Uh, he also was a school teacher and he became a uh, part of the state general assembly back in the 20s when uh, essentially at the time when the Ku Klux Klan was running the state. He became a congressman in the late 40s and uh, from the start water development in the West through the Bureau of Reclamation was his primary objective. He was, uh, uh, I guess what you would call at this point, a, a, a Old West congressman uh, of the West that was uh, agricultural, mining, and logging interests. But Aspinall became the chair of the House Interior and Insular Affairs Committee. After World War II, It was the upper basin's turn. The lower basin had received a lot of development through the Bureau of Reclamation project, the Boulder Canyon project, which included Hoover Dam, the Imperial Dam, and uh, All-American Canal that irrigated the uh, uh, Imperial Valley and some other projects uh, on the uh, Arizona side of the river. There had been a, a great deal of development in the lower basin but very little in the upper basin and the upper basin felt it was their turn. What they came up with was the Colorado River Storage Project and Aspinall was one of both one of the architects of it and the chief proponent for it. The Colorado River Storage Project was going to be several large what we call holdover storage uh, reservoirs that would have more than a year's worth of some streams flow in them. The biggest of course was Lake Powell, uh, Powell Reservoir which has a capacity around 24 million acre feet of water, which is uh, almost twice the annual flow of the Colorado River. Flaming Gorge Reservoir up on in the Utah-Wyoming area on the Green River was going to be a holdover reservoir capable of storing more water than the Green River ran in one year. The San Juan Reservoir down on the Indian Reservation was going to be another one and the fourth one was going to be the Curacati Project which was going to be Blue Mesa Dam, uh, Curacati Dam they were calling it, and it was going to store more than it was going to store a couple million acre feet of water. And so this was in 1964 when I first got to Gunnison Country. And the dam was like underway for two years and it had already started to back up, but not enough where places like Red Creek and uh, Elk Creek Marina, they were still, it's now the marina, but Elk Creek were still low enough where you could go down into there and run the rapids through uh, through the canyon there. It hadn't been backed up yet, so it was pretty fun. But uh, working on the dam was totally new to me. I mean, I was just like 21 years old and never lifted a shovel in my life. So got to learn pretty much a lot of the different things that were happening on the dam because 
being a laborer, you you were able to kind of go to one particular job, like high scaling, and that's I'll explain that what that game is, and also uh, being a powder monkey, and then also working underground with the miners. So there was quite a bit going on at Blue Mesa, but the the dam itself is like 400, almost 400 feet tall. And the crest going in from bank to bank is like 800 feet, um, about almost 800 feet around. And the base of it is pretty wide because it's a gravity, it's a, actually it's a pressure, um, the base is really wide because it's all built out of rocks and sand and compacted material, it had to be compacted up to the specs of the engineers so that there would be no leaking of the water coming through. And uh, so I would say that when I got there it was probably half half built up to that um, 200 foot level above the, above the river. And of course the river had to be um, diverted as it was being built and the first part of it was up in front they built a coffer dam which they drilled through the, through the um, the side of the river, or side of the bank of the, the canyon, and built a tunnel to go around so the river could go around while they were working on the base. So as they, as they excavated, they excavated the sides to build a keystone. The keystone was both, uh, or it's actually called the keyway, and the keyway was where the rocks were drilled away on the sides and made a keyway so that they that's where the the rock of the excavated part were compacted and then they had to grout cement grout the two different materials together the solid rock and the rock that was put up against the bank they had to be grouted with concrete and what they did is they drilled holes into the rock on the side and that was one of the jobs that I had hanging off of ropes and running a hundred pound jackhammer and you would drill down 20 or 30 feet and then they would load it with powder and dynamite and then they would blow the keyway out a certain they did a certain depth it was all done by the surveyors the engineer surveyors they tell you they tell you how far to drill how much dynamite to put in there to blow it out so they could use that keyway as a surface that would loosen all the really rough rock. Then you'd have to drill holes in front of the dam and in the back part of the dam where the water was going to be, drill holes through and then you'd have to pump that full of rock or full of concrete. And they would pump it full of concrete sometimes for days and pretty soon they would find out well if, the, if it's not filling it up there must be something must be going downstream. So they would put dye in the concrete and then they'd send engineers down below the dam to find out where the concrete or the water or whatever was coming out and they'd know if it was far enough that they could shut off the concrete and it would harden and it would be seal off the water from going through the rocks. The operators with the, the trucks and the D9s and all the D8s back then they had I think um, would come and pick up all the material and dump, put it in the dump trucks, and then they take it to the crusher, and they crush it up, and then they bring it back and put it on the dam. They do it in layers. They compact it in layers and build it up as you went. So, if some of the rock wasn't loose, it'd be really dangerous for people uh, working below to have that all break through. So, all us high scalers would go up above and work our way down side by side on ropes, and we have these big bars, and we break away all this rock and it all fall down and then we know that it was clear for people working down below. You can see the power plant at the base of the dam. Water from the reservoir flows through a pinstock to drive two turbines in the plant. Each turbine has the capacity to generate 48,000 kilowatts of electricity, enough power to supply a city of about 77,000 people. The so Blue Mesa Dam is a hydroelectric plant uh, dam, and we had to build. They had to build a keyway for the cylinders to be set inside the rock, and the cylinders 
the, the keyway is like a long tube that was cut through the rock at an 89 degree um, uh, angle. It wasn't 90 degrees, it had to be a little 89 degrees so the water would flow down and hit and <clears throat> I think it was like a 150 or 200 foot drop and once it hit the turbines that's what turned the turbines and provided the electricity. The two generating units are operated by remote control from the operations center at Glen Canyon Dam, Page, Arizona. The electricity is connected into a extensive network of transmission lines which carry power to rural and metropolitan areas of the West and is marketed by Western Area Power Administration. But my summer job was doing all that, but my winter job when I was going to school at Western was to go there with one supervisor, and that was only the two of us. And my job was to keep the, uh, the heaters, the salamanders, full of diesel so that the cylinders in the middle of the winter wouldn't contract and expand because of the wells, and they had to keep them warm. The Colorado River Storage Project on the Upper Colorado River is the most complex and extensive river water development in the world. It includes drainage in Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico, about one-twelfth of the continental area of the United States. These units regulate the erratic flows of the Colorado River so that commitments to the lower basin states can be assured and water can be provided in the upper basin for irrigation, municipality, and industrial use, hydroelectric power, recreation, and wildlife.